What's up guys? Today I am working inside of one of the tiny houses that we're building for a customer. It's a cool house. This is actually going to go on the water. Uh, so we'll put the tiny house right on a crane barge and it's going to float out in the water and it'll be like, it'll be a floating home. But that's not what I'm here to talk to you about today. Today I want to teach you how to wire a switch. And in this case, we're going to wire three switches, start from scratch and go through all of the different process of understanding when you open up that switch box, uh, what is inside there and what it all means and so that you have more confidence if you wanna change the switches in your own house. But before we get started, I need you to hit that subscribe button in case you're not subscribed to this channel. And also, can you just like this video? I know you're gonna like it, but really just hit that button so that it really helps us uh, get more of this content out to people like you who are just looking on how to fix their house. So, all right, let's get started. What do you do with this? You know, there's a lot going on here, but today we're gonna break it all down and make it very, very simple. So the first thing I wanna show you is these bare copper wires. Now this is a Rolmex, this is what they would call Rolmex wiring. Uh, you might have pipe coming into your boxes in your home. If that's the case, then you're not gonna see these bare copper wires because the pipe actually acts as the ground for the whole circuit. But in our case, we have this copper wire and what we're gonna do first is we're gonna fold everything up out of the way and then we're gonna take our pliers and we're just gonna take these wires like this, get this paper out of here and then just kind of take two one way and two the other and then take these guys right here and we're just going to crimp on right there not to we're not cutting anything we're just holding them in place and then we're going to turn this like this and this is going to take all those grounds and make them nice and tight so that they're all connected nice and tight together now we have three switches because we got one, two, three spots. So we're only going to need three of these. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to cut off the three just like that. And I'm going to give this one last twist so it's nice and tight. And then we're going to take this wire and we're going to use it for all three switches. And you'll see what I do in a second. But the first thing I want to do I'm going to take this and I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to push this to the back of the box. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't want that ground to come back up and bump into our positives or our hot wire and then cause a, a short in the circuit. So now that we've done that with our ground, the next step in this process is we have to get rid of these neutrals. And I don't mean get rid of them like cut them and just not do anything with them, but we have to strip these and then we have to splice them together and those also go to the back of the box. So we're only gonna use, for our switches, we're gonna use this hot, and we're gonna use these, which are called our switch legs. Now I've gone and identified the switch legs with a loop. So all these are gonna be our switches, and this is our hot, and this is our neutrals. Now, before you do anything like this, especially in new construction, you shouldn't have to worry about it because the power should be off, but make sure that the power's off if you're gonna be messing around in here. Um, the principles I'm going to teach you today are going to make it so that you don't have to shut the power off because you're going to understand how it all works. If you've never done this before, it's very important that you shut the power off, even if you do understand how this all works. So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to clip all of these whites about that far away. And then we're going to take our, our cutters. Now, if you've never stripped wires with just normal alignments, I'll teach you how to do that right now. So. You're gonna just take the, the cutting end. Now I've, I've cut live wires and it burnt this part out, which actually acts as a nice place to strip the wires, but we're gonna strip from the sharp end. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you're just gonna barely touch that insulation until it doesn't move. Take this finger and kind of hook it there. Take your thumb, put it here and push. And what you're doing is, is you're cutting 50% of that insulation and you're tearing the rest of it. And it doesn't take a lot of pressure. Just, you just wanna make sure that that is gripped on there and then, and then you just push that off like that. And 
if you're going to be an electrician or you're going to, or you're learning to be an electrician, um, this is a really good technique to learn because it saves you a lot of time from switching tools. I also have these nice strippers. These are a Rolmex stripper. They'll strip the entire Rolmex casing and then also inside there they have the two different gauges of wire to strip. But if you're going to get fast at your craft, you should really learn how to do this part really good just with alignments pliers because it's going to save you a lot of time and you'll, you'll create a lot of speed when it comes to trimming things out. So now I'm going to take all four of those white wires and I'm going to line them up like that and then I'm going to just twist and I'm going to keep twisting and it's important that they, they start to uniformly kind of come together. You don't want it in an inconsistent pattern because you won't be able to get it really tight. So then you're just going to crank on that and get it nice and tight like that. And then you come back and you see all those ends. You're just going to find a nice healthy spot about that far away. You're going to clip it like that. And then you're going to take a wire nut and you're just going to put the wire nut on there like that. The wire nut doesn't need to be cranked down with anything more than like a finger tight. If you've got the splice wound together nice and tight, then you don't got to worry about anything. And then we're going to take those whites and we're going to just tuck that into the back. Okay. Now, for this next part, we're going to need to get some wire because we're going to need to make what's called pigtails. Okay. So I just grabbed some Rolmex off the floor. It's important that after you pull the whole house, you don't want to throw all this out. You want to keep some of it around because you're going to need it to do stuff like this. So these are a really nice tool to have. It's uh, made by Southwire. Uh, it's, a, it's a Rolmex stripper. So what you'll do is you just put that on the end like you're stripping any wire. And then, oh, party foul. Well, that's not supposed to happen. I guess I've used them so much that the glue came right off. So, all right, so then you just give this a little wiggle. <laughs> and it happens again. So we're not going to use those. We're just going to use them. We'll just use them raw. All right. I've just used these a lot. So that's what's supposed to happen, just like that. So I guess we don't need those anymore. They've outdone their welcome. So if this isn't enough and you need to get more, then... All you need to do is grab two of the wires, take the other wire and just kind of rip it down like this. And sometimes you got to put a little cut in the side here, just a little. So you just get a little like that and then grab them and then it'll just, it'll just fall apart. So now we got plenty of wire. We're going to use the black wire for what we're doing today. All right, so now we need to create what's called a pigtail. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wire and I'm going to cut, you know, three pieces that are pretty much equal to each other. And don't worry if they're too long. It's better to have them too long than too short because you want to be able to move them around. And then once you get all this tied together, then you can trim these down to do uh, once you put the switches on. So then we're going to take each of these and we're going to strip these down, same way we did the neutrals. And then this is our hot. So this is our main feed to all of our switches. So it's important to identify that because that's what you're going to, that's what you're going to have that pigtail onto. So then you take all of these just the same way you did the whites and you just kind of hold all four together. And the same thing applies. You want to make sure that these start to roll together nice and easy and then crank them down nice and tight so that you got a nice a nice splice on there and then again trim them back like that and then we're going to take another wire nut and we're just going to put a wire nut on there and sometimes you'll notice like whoops we got a little copper showing so that's an easy fix you just back that back off trim a little more of your copper off and then you're going to just spin that on nice and tight, hand tight. You don't need to use any pliers for this. This is a real simple thing. So then you got the three wires like that. Again, you're going to tuck this wire nut back in, into the box so that it's out of the way of the switches. 
and then you take your pigtails and you're going to line them up with each of your switches just like that. Now comes the part with the switches. So it's a pretty simple Legrand switch. Now these have a little metal plate in them so you can slide the wire in there and then it clamps it down. If you don't have these little metal plates, I'll show you how to do a hook. So we'll do one where we put it in there and then I'll show you the other way to put a hook on there. Now I always make up these little rhymes and stuff like that. So what I always say is hot's on top. So what we got here is our hot. And so we don't get confused because it's all black wire. We'll put the hot on top. And what I mean by that is, see how it says top on the switch right there? We're going to put the hot on the top. So on, on this switch, we'll just slide it between the plate like I did. And we'll just crank that down. This is a nice screwdriver to use for this type of work. It's called, a, I, I call it a mid-range screwdriver. It's a nine and a half, it's a nine inch um, flat blade. It's got enough torsion torque to where you can get a good crank on it, but it's not going to over tighten and break things. So I like to use that screwdriver for, for this type of work. So now that we've identified, we got our hot on there, we're going to take the switch. We'll unloop this so we got a little more room. And on this one, I want to show you that hook. So the first thing we want to do is you just want to strip it a little past those pliers like that. And then you can take it and kind of grab right there and you're going to hook that over like that. Now, the other thing you can do Let's straighten that back out, and I'll show you that mid-range screwdriver. You probably wonder what that is for, right? Well, in the case of this, that'll also give you a nice hook. The only thing is, is I'm not used to doing it that way, and it was a little, little too much, so we'll, we'll try that again. So you just want a little bit, just want it to grab a little bit like that. See, I'm not used to doing this like that and it'll put a little hook on there. I personally think that doing it the other way is much easier because you get a nice tight hook and then you're just going to take that hook, throw it right behind the screw. Now it's important when you're doing this, you want to go clockwise. So you want the hook to come around and go the same direction as the screw because if it goes the other way, it'll push the hook right off the screw. So when I go like this, you'll see it, it'll, it'll start to crimp itself. See how it starts to turn like that? and then you got a nice solid bond. And then that's gonna be one of your switches. Now what do we do with this, this ground wire? Well, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take this guy like this, tuck it back, and then we're gonna take our ground wire and we're gonna, we're gonna just do a simple little loop like this. And we're gonna hook it right around that wire right around that post I should say and we're gonna crimp it down so it gets nice and tight around that screw again going clockwise because we want it to get nice and tight and then we'll just crimp that down and then we got plenty of ground wire to go to our next switch and so I'll grab another switch So now we've got our three switches. It's important that after you get done with the switches, it's good practice to tape them. Um, you don't have to, but it definitely protects against when the power's on, um, anything shocking each other. So I just throw some tape over the terminals, make sure I cover up all the, all the copper that way. It doesn't need a lot of wraps, just, just enough to protect things from shorting against each other when you're trying to push everything into the box. So we'll just put some tape on these. So after you turn the power on, just kind of stand back. No, I should just turn the light on. So that is it. So if you have any questions about this, which I'm sure you do, Leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching this video. And as always, if you haven't subscribed, I hope you will now. And if you are subscribed, turn on those notifications so you'll always know when we upload a new how-to video. And I look forward to answering your questions in the comments below. I'll see you next time.